Hey, it's Joe Farrow Geek Toolkit. Welcome back. This is the third video in a series. In this video, we're gonna learn how to use an Arduino Leonardo with facial recognition to send key presses. The ending scenario though is much more complicated and cool that we're actually building out. This is the third video in a series and putting all three of these videos together will enable the following scenario that I'm gonna show you right now. What we have is an arcade cabinet and I'm gonna walk up to it and when the arcade cabinet sees my face, basically using an AI camera, it's gonna switch over to a certain theme that I want. Now I'm gonna grab Nat here and when it sees her face, it's actually gonna switch over to a theme for her. The game list is also changing. And when it sees both of us, it goes to yet a third theme. This was a really cool scenario that I thought up a couple years ago and I've been wanting to build it ever since, but I really needed technology to kind of catch up a little bit. Doing artificial intelligence on an Arduino was incredibly hard a couple years ago, but now with this Husky Lens camera, it's incredibly simple. I've done three videos now. The first video was the on the Husky Lens itself, where that one showed you how to hook the Husky Lens up to an Arduino and give you a demo of all of the features that thing has. Being an AI camera, it does a lot more than facial recognition, it actually does object detection and more. In the second video, I actually showed you the arcade portion of this using attract mode. I went over displays and how to switch them using our keyboard shortcuts, basically. In this video, we're going to tie it together because the Arduino Leonardo is an Arduino that can actually emulate a keyboard. This means that we can take the Husky Lens camera, take the images it recognizes, send them to the Arduino, have it emulate a key press, and then control attract mode. And that's how the demo that you just saw was put together. Let's get started by talking about the Arduino Leonardo real quick. So here's the Leonardo, and you can see it looks just like the Arduino Uno, but it actually uses an AT Mega 32U4 chip. That chipset has a USB transceiver on it, which means that when you plug it in, it can actually go into a mode where it can act as a USB device. On top of USB is a protocol called HID, or Human Interface Device, and it's a standard protocol where devices use what's called a descriptor to actually send out what they are. So a thing can send out a descriptor and say, I'm a keyboard or I'm a mouse. The Leonardo has libraries for this to actually act as a keyboard, which is incredibly powerful. Let's talk about how to actually send keyboard events, which is the start of this video. And then we'll get in add in the facial recognition right after that. Here's a sample code that we're gonna go over today for the Leonardo for just sending a key press. I actually use a serial command, which is very safe because what it requires is I have to send a key press before it will send one back. This prevents it from just sending random key presses along. We'll go through the code bit by bit here, and then I'll go through the references to talk about those in more detail. Basically, I set up a serial connection, which is just a serial.begin at 115200 baud. I'm just doing a print line to let me know that, okay, it's, it's waiting, and then I give it a five second wait. This five second wait is almost like my parachute ripcord to make sure that I don't lose access to the keyboard. You have to be really careful, so anything you can put in to make this a little bit safer is really worth it. This if statement here is very simple. It's just basically gonna wait for serial communication to come across. If it doesn't come across, it'll wait for it. When serial communication does come across, it's gonna read it, and then it's gonna acknowledge that it has serial communication. And then we're again, a little bit of a safety here. We're gonna wait for a second. This keyboard.write comes from the keyboard header that we include here, and that's really how you can send keys. It's very simple. Now, a keyboard press is interesting. When you're sending hit events like this, there's three things to keep in mind. One is, when you press a key, you actually press it. You have to do an action of releasing it. If you don't do this, it will hold the key down. So you have to press number one. Number two, you have to release. And number three, it's safe to do a release all at the end to make sure that you never hold down any keys longer than you intend to. So at the bottom here, I'm actually gonna uncomment this release all. Now the keyboard.write command is actually a press and release, so it's a simple way to do that. And that's really handy if you're sending single letters across. If you're sending what are called corded keys, which you're hitting more than one key press at a time, like say you're hitting shift A, you actually wanna do a press, not a write. That will hold the shift key down. So you can say press shift, hit another key, release shift and the other key. And that's how you hit shift in something. We'll talk about that in a second. For now, let's just do a quick demo with this right here where we're gonna write okay when it receives serial. Okay, what I'm doing now is uploading the code and we should see ready when it's ready to go. Now remember, I have a five second delay here, so it's gonna take it a second to actually show up. 
There we go. Now it says it's ready. So when I type something here, it doesn't matter what I type, it's going to type OK. It acknowledged and then it typed OK. That was the Arduino basically acting as a keyboard and typing because I programmed it to say OK. I can program it to say much more complex things, but for now you get the idea. This is a way to send keystrokes and we can go with that. The next thing I want to show you how to do is how to have a shortcut that does something interesting. In this case, we're going to play a sound file just to kind of demo this. So I have a wave file here. Sounds like that. And I am going to create a shortcut on the desktop right here. And when I go to properties, you'll see that you get access to a shortcut key. Now, if I go to properties on the wave file, there is no such thing as shortcut key there. It's only on the shortcuts. If the shortcut's on the desktop and it has a shortcut key, then when I hit Control Alt 7, you'll see Windows Media Player launch and it will play that sound. So now I have a shortcut to play a sound, which is super handy for my next demo. We want to learn how to hit chord keys and the shortcut for that was Control Alt 7. So here at the bottom of the Leonardo code, you can see I have some stuff commented out and this is just how to send multiple keys at once. We do a keyboard.press, not right, so it holds down the left control. Then we press the left alt, and again, it will hold it down. And then we press seven. You want to do it in this order because you want to have those two down before you hit the seven. Then we do a release all to be safe and let go of everything. Now let's test this out and see what happens. I'm going to go back to the desktop view. We're going to bring up the serial monitor and I'll just type test. There's the act saying that it received it. There's the okay saying that it type. And now we've launched a shortcut. Okay, that was a really simple demo, but it basically shows you using the Leonardo as a keyboard device, which is incredibly powerful now. Now that you know that you can do that, you can research stuff like the mouse APIs and actually use it as a mouse. You can actually program your own controller and do all sorts of great things like this. What we're gonna do next now is move over to the Husky Lens portion of this, which is the AI and facial recognition. Now I've already shown you how to send that to the Leonardo in the first video. So we'll jump to that part and then we'll add in the keyboard section. Okay, for the next part, I wanna actually walk through logic without showing you the code because I think sometimes it's easier to just think about it through in your head, understand the logic, then we'll go into code and then it'll be very simple. I'll walk you through how it works. The logic I came up with is the scenario is I want to walk up to an arcade cabinet. When it sees my face and knows that I am not the person that was standing there, I want it to recognize that, identify me, and then set it to my game list, and so on. The way we did this in, in the second video is we hit the number two key. So when it sees my face, hit number two. Now, if I'm standing there playing, I don't want it to see my face every frame and keep hitting number two. So I need to have this concept of who is the last person it saw and recognized and only do something if they're different. Now Nat, uh, or Black Widow from the Avengers, the, the standee, her face was recognized as one. So if it sees her face and it's not the last face seen, that means that it saw me and then it sees her, then it should hit one. And then as long as she is there, it should hit one. Now there's a third scenario that we have to keep in mind of what if it sees faces and it doesn't identify them, but it recognizes faces. It's very common in AI. Before it actually zones in and knows which the, what the face is, it might just say, I see a face, but I'm not sure who it is. Now, when it sees those faces, we can decide to do something or not. This is going to be similar if somebody walks up to the arcade cabinet that it doesn't recognize. We have to decide what to do with them. In my code right now, I ignore that. I don't do anything because it gets confusing between a person that walks up to the arcade cabinet or me where it goes, I recognize you and now the next frame maybe it doesn't because my head turned, then that becomes a problem. So we have to keep track of that. Now there's one more scenario we have to keep track of. What if there's two people that it recognizes or doesn't recognize in front of the cabinet? Basically it sees more than one person, either an unknown and me, an unknown and that, or so on. Those are the four scenarios we have to keep in track of. Now if we see that fourth scenario where it sees two people, then my logic is hit the three key, which means all games and a custom background for everybody. That way we have three scenarios. I have a personal arcade, Nat has a personal arcade, and then if there's more of us there, then it just kind of does a free for all. Here's the code for that. Now I talked about that concept of memorizing the last person. That's right here, the last ID. It's so a global. We set it to negative one so that it's an invalid value that we can actually set to a valid value when it detects somebody. 
The rest, this is boilerplate from the first video. This is the Husky Lens sample code, and we can actually reuse this. It has some great code for detecting if the Husky Lens is there or not and doing the serial communication. So we'll keep all of that. That jumps us down here to this loop where we have this else statement where it's actually looking for detecting something. We set something called multiple to negative one, another flag that we're gonna keep around and it's gonna basically reiterate every time it goes through and detects something, we're gonna say, hey, did you detect more than one person? The way the Husky Lens does this loop is if there's more than one person detected, it will fire the loop twice and pass the person in each time. So by setting this to negative one and then setting it to one at the end of the loop, if we see it again as one, we know we've gone through the loop twice and that means that we see more than one person. We see if the Husky Lens is available, it's a serial device, we're gonna look for any serial incoming data. And then if so, we're gonna read the result. And the result has an ID property, which is zero if it doesn't know the face, one if it's Nat, and two if it's me. Right here, if we see zero, we just log it. We don't do anything. But you see I have the code there to hit the A key for all if you wanna do that. If you wanna program the A key to be everybody or something, you can do something there. I just ignore it for now. If the result is one, which is Nat, and the last ID was not one, which means it hasn't seen her in the last frame, that means that she is showing up as a new face, and then we're gonna hit the one key. There's a keyboard that press it, one. Now, if you combine that with the second video, when you hit the one key, that switches the game list. So that's how this all connects. The result is me, and I wasn't the last person that was there. That means my face is new. Then it's gonna hit the two key. Now here's where we actually handle the more complex scenarios of multiple people. We see if the result is somebody that it didn't recognize. If it did recognize a person, then we store them off as the last person it recognized because we wanna use that info later. Then we check if multiple is one. Now, if you're following the code, you're like, there's no way it could be one, it was negative one. That's absolutely true. At this point, the first time through this loop, it can't possibly be one on the first try. So this will always be false on the first time through the loop. Then we release all the keys to be safe, make sure we're not holding anything down, and then we set multiple to one. Now, here's the trick. If there's more than one face detected, Husky Lens available will actually go through a second time with the existing variables. That means that we'll end up in this loop here, which means that multiple will still be one. When we get down to here, no matter what it detects, if multiple is one, it's gonna press the three key. That is set for all. This is how we set up the thing where when it saw Nat and myself at the same time, it hit all. Now let's watch the video one more time now that we know the code, but talk through it as if the code's going through. So here I grab Nat, I show her face and it's gonna set it to Marvel. That was hitting one. When it sees both of us staying together, then you see it hit the key to actually switch it. Okay, that was it. That That is everything on the rundown. Now there's a lot of stuff you should know now if you didn't know it at the beginning of this video. In the combined series, there's a bunch of skills that you should have now that should be really cool. You can send key presses, you can do facial detection, you can do object detection, you can do Arduino Leonardo stuff, you can do uh, really cool stuff with a tracked mode now. So all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm gonna keep expanding on this because I think there's a lot more to this. Uh, maybe the next time we do NFC, maybe we do something where we start sending MQTT to Home Assistant. There's future scenarios here that I wanna work on. Thank you for watching Geek Toolkit, I'm Joe Farrow. Let me know if you like this stuff. If you want to see more Arduino tutorials and more Arduino projects, I definitely have a lot of cool ideas there that I would like to explore. Thanks for watching and until next time.